Hello and welcome to another episode of Ezoic Explains. I'm Whitney Wright and today I'm going to be talking about Comscore and Comscore rankings and whether they matter to advertisers and publishers. Comscore is a global media measurement and analytics company. They offer third-party measurement of audience, demographics, and performance for media across multiple mediums. The Comscore Media Matrix uses panels to measure audiences, which are often observed by advertisers and agencies. So how do Comscore ratings differ from any other analytics like Google Analytics? The difference is Comscore's goal is to measure exactly who an audience is and their consumption behavior, and it's more traditional in the way it looks at human behavior, since the way it tracks audiences across mediums is less objective than digital has become. Additionally, their panel method defines page views across all sites. However, Comscore's panels and their competitor Nielsen both rely heavily on voluntary participation in order to provide their composite scoring, meaning audiences, publishers, and agencies must follow what they require in order to participate. Comscore is usually more important to larger agencies and top 50 publishers, as they are typically a point of contention when negotiating contracts, since Comscore sits as a middleman between. If a publisher doesn't include Comscore pixels on their pages, often because they slow down sites and can cause errors, they'll not be counted in Comscore's ranking. But that actually doesn't mean an advertiser won't target an audience on their site. So, advertisers that do use Comscore when buying through an agency will still target audiences on publisher sites that don't use Comscore or their competitors. As I said, Comscore is usually used for bigger brands and agencies, so is there a point for other digital publishers to care? It just depends on what your goals are. The monetary incentive is very little for most publishers. However, it is a competitive point of contention among some of the long-running media brands that used to depend on these scores or rankings for TV buying campaigns. So what are the Comscore panels and what do they measure? The panel measurements comprise the Comscore rankings, a monthly list of the top 50 digital properties across the web ranked by the number of unique visitors from highest to lowest. Who is in the panel is identified by Comscore as either home or work-based machines. These have to be personally owned by the panelist or household to qualify them as home panelists. Computers owned by an employer qualify as work computers. Some of the things the panel methodology can register unique visitors across are internet activity from all web entities regardless of browser type, private browsing sessions, secure sessions, content elements, streaming, instant messaging, and web-based technologies and protocols. The panel is then weighted and projected to the home and work internet universes in the United States, which allows the behavior of panelists to be projected to the U.S. home and work internet user populations at large. We can look at Comscore's numbers for a digital property in the Comscore Top 50 to see if the recorded number of monthly unique visits was comparable. We'll use Facebook in this example. By using similar web, one of Comscore's competitors, we can see that Facebook.com's June 2020 unique monthly visitors was 90.64 million. Looking at Comscore's number, we can see that it was 90.42 million. This shows that Comscore is pretty accurate as both numbers are nearly equal. You may have noticed that Comscore traffic numbers are lower than those in Google Analytics. This is mainly because of a difference in traffic methodologies such as attribution, multiple browsers, non-human traffic, and data projection. For attribution, Google Analytics defines a session timeout as 30 minutes of inactivity, meaning 30 minutes of inactivity adds up to a new session, whereas Comscore defines it as a three-second window to qualify as a visit, and anything less leads to a disqualification. For multiple browsers, Comscore eliminates visits from multiple browsers or screens. Regarding non-humic traffic, Comscore eliminates bot traffic, whereas Google Analytics counts all visits regardless. For data projection, Google Analytics uses real-time data and then records and stores anonymous data. Comscore makes estimation based on the pool of panelists that are tracked via plugins or cookies. Most ad networks in the Comscore Top 50 require publishers to assign their traffic through a traffic assignment letter, which then adds your traffic to their total unique visits count and increases their Comscore property size. Partnering with Comscore can leverage traffic to look bigger. This way, when they are trying to attract agencies, direct advertisers, etc., the audience is large. This benefits you as a partner, assuming they are able to deliver on their promises of attracting those big types of advertisers. A traffic assignment letter is used to assign a publisher's traffic to the network they are working with. Once this traffic is assigned, the ad network can negotiate advertising deals for the network at large and for your individual website. The bigger that the network becomes, in the eyes of Comscores and other like it, the better the deals they're able to negotiate. Publishers can only assign traffic to one place. Ad networks will have you sign a contract so that your traffic is completely signed over to their network so you can't sign any other deals. Signing over your traffic may initially seem like no big deal. However, by signing over your traffic, you are losing your ability to diversify certain revenue streams as you're giving a larger portion of your revenue to the partner. 
Publishers should remain skeptical of deals like this and stay on their toes. If possible, avoid contracts. According to research by Technology Business Research, of every dollar spent on programmatic advertising, only 40 cents reaches actual consumers. That means that 60 cents or more of every dollar is being taken by one of the hundreds of entities out there. Ad rates and demand fluctuate per season, and there are, are always things like Google Core updates to look out for. If you're stuck in a contract with no way to test out what is working or not, you won't know for certain you're getting the best deal. There are a lot of scammy players out there that want to make money off of publishers, so publishers should stay aware. Comscore isn't likely to stay relevant, as it has received mixed reviews from the online space and seems to only benefit those digital properties in the Comscore Top 50. It was more popular 10 years ago. What's more important now is the audience itself and how valuable that is directly to advertisers. There are a few scenarios where you need a large ad network as a middleman, especially if they make you sign a contract. And that's it for this episode of Ezoic Explains. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, please subscribe to our channel, subscribe to this playlist. You can find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at ezoic.com, and we have a blog at ezoic.com slash blog. This has been another episode of Ezoic Explains.